Magna Carta, 1215. John, by the grace of God, King of England, Lord of Ireland, Duke of Normandy and Aquitaine, Count of Anjou, to the Archbishops, Bishops, Abbots, Earls, Barons, Justices, Foresters, Sheriffs, Reeves, Servants and all Bailiffs and his faithful people greeting. Know that by the suggestion of God and for the good of our soul and those of all our predecessors and of our heirs, to the honor of God and the exaltation of Holy Church, and the improvement of our kingdom, by the advice of our venerable father Stephen, Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of all England and Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, and other churchmen, and of the nobleman William Marshall, Earl of Pembroke, and others. In the first place we have granted to God, and by this our present charter confirmed, for us and our heirs forever, that the English Church shall be free, and shall hold its rights entire, and its liberties uninjured. And we will that it thus be observed. Which is shown by this, that the freedom of elections, which is considered to be most important and especially necessary to the English Church, we, of our pure and spontaneous will, granted, and by our charter confirmed, before the contest between us and our barons had arisen, and obtained the confirmation of it by the Lord Pope Innocent III, which we will observe and which we will shall be observed in good faith by our heirs forever. We have granted moreover to all free men of our kingdom for us and our heirs forever all the liberties written below, to be had and holden by themselves and their heirs from us and our heirs. If any of our earls or barons, or others holding from us in chief by military service shall have died, and when he has died his heir shall be of full age and o' relief, he shall have his inheritance by the ancient relief. That is to say, the heir or heirs of an earl for the whole barony of an earl a hundred pounds, the heir or heirs of a baron for a whole barony a hundred pounds, the heir or heirs of a knight, for a whole knight's fee, a hundred shillings at most, and who owes less let him give less according to the ancient custom of fiefs. If moreover the heir of any one of such shall be under age, and shall be wardship, when he comes of age he shall have his inheritance without relief and without a fine. No widow shall be compelled to marry so long as she prefers to live without a husband, provided she gives security that she will not marry without our consent, if she holds from us, or without the consent of her lord from whom she holds, if she holds from another. No scutage, payment instead of military service or aid shall be imposed in our kingdom except by the common council of our kingdom, except for the ransoming of our body, for the making of our oldest son a knight, and for once marrying our oldest daughter, and for these purposes it shall be only a reasonable aid. In the same way it shall be done concerning the aids of the City of London. And the city of London shall have all its ancient liberties and free customs, as well by land as by water. Moreover, we will and grant that all other cities and boroughs and villages and ports shall have all their liberties and free customs. And for holding a common council of the kingdom concerning the assessment of an aid otherwise than in the three cases mentioned above, or concerning the assessment of a scutage we shall cause to be summoned the archbishops bishops, abbots, earls, and great barons by our letters under seal, and besides we shall cause to be summoned generally, by our sheriffs and bailiffs all those who hold from us in chief, for a certain day, that is at the end of forty days at least, and for a certain place, and in all the letters of the summons, we will express the cause of the summons, and when the summons has thus been given the business shall proceed on the appointed day, on the advice of those who shall be present, even if not all of those who were summoned have come. No one shall be compelled to perform any greater service for a knight's fee, or for any other free tenement than is owed from it. No constable or other bailiff of ours shall take anyone's grain or other chattels, without immediately paying for them in money unless he is able to obtain a postponement at the good will of the seller.
No constable shall require any knight to give money in place of his ward of a castle if he is willing to furnish that ward in his own person or through another honest man, if he himself is not able to do it for a reasonable cause, and if we shall lead or send him into the army he shall be free from ward in proportion to the amount of time by which he has been in the army through us. No sheriff or bailiff of ours or anyone else shall take horses or wagons of any free man for carrying purposes except on the permission of that free man. Neither we nor our bailiffs will take the word of another man for castles, or for anything else which we are doing, except by the permission of him to whom the wood belongs. No free man shall be taken or imprisoned or dispossessed, or outlawed, or banished, or in any way destroyed, nor will we go upon him, nor send upon him, except by the legal judgment of his peers or by the law of the land. To no one will we sell, to no one will we deny, or delay right or justice. All merchants shall be safe and secure in going out from England and coming into England and in remaining and going through England, as well by land as by water, for buying and selling, free from all evil tolls, by the ancient and rightful customs, except in time of war. All forests which have been afforested that is made into royal forests in our time shall be disafforested immediately, and so it shall be concerning river banks which in our time have been fenced in. And immediately after the re-establishment of peace we will remove from the kingdom all foreign-born soldiers, crossbow men, servants, and mercenaries who have come with horses and arms for the injury of the realm. If anyone shall have been dispossessed or removed by us without legal judgment of his peers, from his lands, castles, franchises, or his right we will restore them to him immediately. All fines which have been imposed unjustly and against the law of the land, and all penalties imposed unjustly and against the law of the land are altogether excused, or will be on the judgment of the twenty-five barons of whom mention is made below in connection with the security of the peace, or on the judgment of the majority of them, along with the aforesaid Stephen, Archbishop of Canterbury. Since, moreover, for the sake of God, and for the improvement of kingdom, and for the better quieting of the hostility sprung up lately between us and our barons, we have made all these concessions, wishing them to enjoy these in a complete and firm stability forever, we make and concede to them the security described below. That is to say, that they shall elect twenty-five barons of the kingdom, whom they will, who ought with all their power to observe, hold, and cause to be observed, the peace and liberties, which we have conceded to them. Wherefore we will and firmly command that the Church of England shall be free, and that the men in our kingdom shall have and hold all the aforesaid liberties, rights and concessions, well and peacefully, freely and quietly, fully and completely, for themselves and their heirs, from us and our heirs, in all things and places, forever, as before said. It has been sworn, moreover, as well on our part as on the part of the barons that all these things spoken of above shall be observed in good faith and without any evil intent. Witness the above named and many others. Given by our hand in the meadow which is called Runhamd, between Windsor and Staines, on the fifteenth day of June, in the seventeenth year of our reign, 